All right, so this presentation builds a bit on the two presentations um, we just heard. Um, we are staying one more presentation in the area of mobile phone data. Um, first of all, um, it's, an, it's an honor actually to stand here with a partner, with a private sector partner. We usually don't do that. Um, as you've seen before, we do lots of research in our department and in UNWTO, but uh, we rarely get to jump outside of the organization and have the chance to uh, work with someone on a specific project. Um, many times over the last few years when we were talking to you about new data sources, um, first of all, it became very clear how important and how uh, much potential there was behind uh, mobile phone data. Um, because we are not on the ground and it's you, the observatories, who are on the ground and are uh, passing through all those pilot projects. Um, we always say it's so easy, but we have actually no clue how complex this entire thing is. Um, it always looks easy, especially when you see all the results here on, on the screen then every year when we meet. But um, the complexity, I think, of the process is something that we've talked about a lot within our team. Um, we thought about ways how to better understand you at the destination. And everyone who knows us a little bit better as well knows that although we are small in size and uh, limited maybe financially in certain areas and not as quick as we sometimes want to be, we try to think outside of the box. And this is pretty much how this entire project uh, started. Um, as Dirk mentioned earlier, we, thanks to the team, to UNWTO in general, um, made it possible that I could go back to university last year, which I never thought I would, um, and dive into geographic information technology, so learning lots about big data, about new data sources, and um, learn one year very intensively about this entire topic. And throughout this year, there was a chance of spending a little bit of time in a private sector company to actually do a project hands-on. And um, by accident, or by a very beautiful coincidence, I would say, um, I met Miguel Piconel. He is the director, uh, technical director of Nomon. Nomon is a technology company here in Madrid, based in Madrid, um, that started out in 2012, commercialized in 2015, quite young. There are 20 very talented young people working on new data sources, analysis of new data sources, specializing in mobile phone data. They were one of the first ones who um, knocked on the doors of the mobile network providers here in Madrid, got an agreement with one of the biggest ones right in the beginning, and were lucky, I think, over the years to work with them, especially in the area of mobility. Now, tourism for them was a bit of a new area they've been exploring over the last couple of years. And um, as the coincident then came about, I was looking for someone crazy enough to take me in for three days, uh, three months, and they were a bit crazy in opening their doors to a total strangers, uh, allowing them to actually work with their data and um, do a bit of a pilot study. We want to present you the results of this pilot study. I have to say right away that we are still ongoing. Those are kind of um, the first basic insights. Um, I think, um, did I forget anything first of all about Nomon? No? All right. Um, he's a bit sick, so we agreed I would take the lead on that, and then he um, finishes later concluding and uh, giving you a bit more insight about, about Norman. Um, I think we don't have to discuss and um, go back again why mobile phone data is actually that important and that um, interesting for the tourism sector. I think we all know how um, close and connected and addictive we are to mobile phone data, so I that jumped that. Um, it was very clear that we wanted to see the potential of this data in Madrid. So we defined a case study specifically in Madrid where we wanted to understand tourism better in the city at specific locations, so at specific areas around attractions that we know. Um, now, normally it's the case that you have mobile phone data speak to you. You look at all the data and you see the points um, or the... Um, yeah accumulation of points and then you identify where those points of interest are. Those are usually the, the pilot study that we've seen. This time around we said um, we more or less know the attractions in the city. Um, Madrid, as all of you know, who've been around now, is quite dense on attractions. Um, the city center has a lot. And um, we looked at all the ratings of uh, attractions, um, all the common top 10, top 20, top 30 um, yeah, attractions we have in the city and then 
decided on where we wanted to focus on. I'll come back on that. We um, did focus on national and domestic, so we split that up as you've seen before. We took the month of April 2018. Um, we tried to have a month that is relatively um, neutral, let's say, which is almost impossible in a big city like that. There's always something special going on in, in those months. But um, we, we picked one week, we analyzed the week before and after that, and then we looked especially at those areas, those selected areas. Um, I can't say, I knew it was a big effort to do big data analysis, but I didn't know how big that actually was. Um, the data points that had to be considered and analyzed and processed were um, lots and lots and lots. Um, we went back before all of that um, to decide which indicators we want to specifically look at and we're looking at all the pilot projects and research articles uh, and the underlying projects in the last few years to see what kind of indicators have been measured with mobile phone data. Now, as you see, those are a lot. On the left-hand side, you see those that were most common in the mobile phone data studies and up until now. Um, on the right side, they, we have found them, but we haven't found them very much. And the red ones are the ones where we, in the end, said we want to try to identify those indicators with the time that we have and the, yeah, with the purpose that we set. Um, those are, I don't know, I hope it is visible, it's a bit small, um, are the final 19 areas that we defined where we wanted to see what the tourists are actually doing. Um, we had a list of more than 50, we narrowed it down. We first talked about points of interest, then we realized actually it's areas of interest, including several points of interest. Um, so there was a long process even defining just where we're going to go and measure. Um, if you see, this is Madrid, we are right up here in the north. And this was especially for indicators related to um, international and domestic arrivals um, during the day. And we also defined one area, two areas, actually based on the neighborhoods that Madrid has, where we wanted to see what is happening during the night. Where do actually people stay? Which kind of derived out of the entire um, discussion around official accommodation. Where do people stay outside of that? And so forth. So those are kind of the two areas that we focused on most for all of this. Now, the insight that we generated, as I said, um, those are the first insights. Um, this is, you can see here, this is a bit of a different perspective, but we have all the areas included in here. And um, you will see now a few bars popping up here. Every color is one day. And I'm um, encouraging you to look at the right-hand side over here when, when it is moving. And I hope it is moving. Yes, it is. So this is pretty much the volume that we could detect during those days. And now coming up to the right-hand side, I hope you saw that there was a huge difference of uh, visitors that we could detect, which was actually an, not planned at all. And we picked that week because we thought it was neutral and then we saw there was actually something going on in that area. Um, what was going on, if we zoom on on those two, was that there was the final uh, King's Cup where Barcelona against Sevilla were playing in that uh, Saturday, exactly in that week that we picked. And um, also here you will see a few bars, uh, a yellow bar that is going to be all the residents from Barcelona that came to visit Madrid. Then the pink one is going to be the rest of Spain, uh, purple one is going to be foreign tourists, and the green one is going to be Sevilla. So in that one, We took a day and two before the actual event, and then you see in the fan zone of Sevilla what is actually happening uh, that evening or that day. The game, I believe, was from 9.30 to 11 or more or less like that, so it was in the evening. Um, this is the translation, the more static translation of what we had. Um, Wanda is the stadium where, for all of those who don't know in Madrid, where the game was happening. This is the Saturday where the game was happening. And then there was the fan zone of Sevilla and IFEMA, which is our Congress center, was the area on Saturday where we had the fan zone of Barcelona. And you see very clearly here that um, what's going on 
at that night. So that was a very nice surprise for those learning um, to see what is actually possible in detecting with that kind of, kind of data. Um, we did other insights. So I have two more. I skip uh, the next two, but this one I do want to touch upon because it kind of connects with what we've been talking to about before. Just Dirk was just mentioning that as well, and Christoph, I believe, as well. Um, we looked at the differences between nationals and foreigners that came to Madrid to those specific groups. Now, this is a selection of four um, uh, areas of interest. The one, the upper row that you see here, is uh, a group of uh, areas of attraction where we see that foreign tourists make up more than 10% of who's visiting and who's not visiting. On the lower part, you have attractions, a group of attractions where there's less than 10% foreign visitors. Um, I didn't think I would say that because I was going into a big data project and I was ex especially excited about dynamic visualizations and everything, but I think this is actually one of the coolest graphs we have out of this uh, research because it shows perfectly the ratio that we have at this moment of time also on a global level from domestic and international travel. And we are not very aware of the fact how much we actually have the share of domestic tourism that Dirk already touched upon before. I believe on a global level, more or less, it is, it is more or less the same. It's about 13% and then 87% international arrivals. So international tourism. Um, so yeah, I think that was the main, main point on that one. Then we've done, done other things like looking into the nights. I already said that. I, I run through this. Um, it is a density map that we've seen before. Um, on the left-hand side, you see the nationals, where they spend their nights. And on the right-hand side, you see the foreigners, where they spend the night. Very clear when you get to the end of this that the foreigners stay much more in the city center and that we have a bigger dispersion and a spread of nationals um, over, overnight. The last one is um, we try to look at the relations between the different areas uh, of interest. Um, also no surprise here, um, Retiro Park, Castellana, um, City Center, they're all very closely linked to one another. This is kind of the basis for another study that we are hoping to do. Um, Gran Via City Center, as you all know, who've been walking around a little bit in the city yesterday, um, they're very close to each other, so that was really no surprise. But this was kind of a bit beginning of a different analysis. Yes, um, to hand this over to Miguel. Um, again, I think I could fill this entire slide with um, observations that we did, lots of the discussions that we had about quality and data that we've had many, many discussions and brainstorming about, that about in the last few months. It was very clear the benefits that come out of this type of data, very clear the challenges that we have with it, the localized insights that you get, like we were just showing uh, of the stadiums, um, are impressive um, and the tendencies like the domestic and the international I think um, are very nice visualizations that actually bring some light into some of the dark areas that we tend not to discuss so much. Um, from an academic point of view I need to finish this also to finish this entire course. Um, there's going to be more analysis, spatial analysis, but um, Miguel is actually taking this experience then into the company. Um, all of them, as I said, have worked, of the team, have worked with us on this the last few months. And um, he's going to quickly explain in two sentences <laughs> what you're doing, what, you're, what they're trying actually to do to help destinations and other clients, also private sector, to, to take this forward. Okay, thank you. So just a couple of slides more. Uh, as Verica said, uh, we at Nomon have been working from this data from 2012. We have been working on transportation sector mainly and also from also in the geomarketing sector from these last seven years. So now in the last year we are trying to get all this knowledge we have learned during these years into the tourism sector. So first I have to say that we have learned a lot from the project that Birka has presented us. We have involved our solution. We have evolved our solution. We have learned a lot about the kind of indicators that we want to measure and also we have improved how we measure indicators like the length of stay, overnight, other kind of indicators. Uh, apart from this project, we are involved in other, in other initiatives. 
just give you a couple of examples. We are working with different entities, cities and private sector providing this kind of indicators. So we are like uh, getting feedback from experience and improving our solution. And we are also involved in other innovation projects, like for example, the Polder uh, project in which we are uh, looking at how we blend mobile phone data with other data sources in order to combine them and obtain more comprehensive indicators. So this is are the kind of project that we are working on. And our ultimate goal, at least in the short term, is to integrate all these solutions that we are developing in our Nomon API, API that we have already in place. We are providing transportation information and geomarket information from an API. And we would like to introduce all this information about the tourist system so we can provide these indicators through an API. So which is the difference? We are now providing this information in a project basis, so to speak, like the project that Birka has shown, but we would like to provide this or to open this information to everyone, so to speak. So we would like to open this information so everyone can access. You can get this information in a standard basis, so you can compare different period of time and different destination, for example. We want to keep this information updated and also to up upload historical information. We also want to get or to provide immediate access to this information. And also an important point that has been mentioned before by Navarra, we want to do it in a really reduced cost to access to this information. So finally, to conclude this last slide to share with you some ideas, and maybe hopefully we can discuss about these ideas. Uh, we believe that mobile phone data is really relevant information or provide really relevant information. But as Christophe said before, uh, this only gives you a part of the history and then you need another kind of information to blend this with other data sources to get the full picture of the, of the history. So this is an important point. Another information, another key point is that different uh, solutions lead to different results. This may be seem obvious, but it's true. And you know, some small changes in how you analyze the data give or lead to a huge difference in the results you get. So this is really important and how we ensure that the information that we are obtaining is good is like through validation processes comparing this information with other traditional information obtained from traditional data sources like survey information or traffic cone information or other kind of traditional information. And finally, uh, we believe that also it's important to share with the end user that this, uh, the final user or the final user of this information, uh, how we have analyzed this information, and to be clear about the capabilities and also the limitation of this information. So our ad advice is just to avoid the magic machine learning solutions, so the black box solutions, and to ask for the providers that clearly specify how they analyze the data, how do the extrapolation, and how to obtain these kind of indicators. And finally, thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you these ideas and open to your question. Thank you very much.